This is now my third round of hatching quail and there's quite a few things that I've learned along the way. Some of them were nice lessons, some of them not so nice, but the main one and probably the easiest one was to just put an anti-slip mat on everything. Now on the incubator I just bought an anti-slip mat from Home Bargains, cut it into a circle and put it in there and it makes it a lot easier for them to hatch because every time they move the eggshell doesn't just rock around. One of the issues that I've had with the two previous batches to this one is that some of them were born and then because the surface was just too slippery they ended up with splayed legs which I then had to fix with essentially quail physiotherapy which involves putting them in a thin little glass so that they have to push their legs up and down and strengthen those muscles but it's so much easier if you can just avoid that problem to begin with. Another thing I do is I take notes on everything. I've already done a video on the gardening journal that I have and every time I start to incubate a new batch of quail eggs, I take a note of when I did it, what happened during that. For example, the batch previous to this, we had a massive heat wave and the incubator overheated because it was so hot outside and I ended up having to have fans pointed at the incubator so that it didn't overheat. But I'm sure this is one of the reasons why I had a lower hatch rate. And the next thing I've started doing, or rather not doing, Doing is not using wood shavings because when it gets wet they think it's food they try and eat it and they choke and the first time I saw one of them do that I managed to fish it out of their throat which was not easy and then 20 minutes later it did it again and died and then another quail did the same thing and at that point I thought I'm not risking this I'm getting rid of the wood chips and instead what I did is I just got some cheap towels which I can then easily clean the cage with they don't slip around they don't hurt their legs they don't hurt their hips it's a firm, easy to clean surface, which they can't choke on. And then the last thing I've started doing is having their food and water out in the open in a dish. I don't like to use the feeders and the water bottles which are designed for older birds until they're about four or five days old. And I do this for a few reasons. When they've just hatched, they are exhausted. They're learning to walk. I don't want this food to be too far away. So I'll have the food underneath the brooder with them so that it's nice and close and I'll have the water outside the brooder because the heat will obviously make it evaporate. I don't want that to evaporate and for them to not have water. Now you do need to have stones in there because these birds are just suicide magnets. They just find a way to kill themselves when they're that young. So I have the water outside and you do have to show them how to eat and drink by just tapping at the water with your fingers and tapping at the food as well. And eventually they'll see that motion and they'll imitate it. And hopefully within the next few weeks, I'll have six new birds that I can add to my flock.